In this first section, I'm going to go over the Photoshop UI and I'll talk a little bit about the brushes that I use, mask, layer blend modes, layer styles, and stuff like that. So the first thing is the UI in general. This is the first time we launch Photoshop CS3. You'll notice that it's nice and compact. Uh, it likes to auto dock the menus and stuff. This is kind of a new feature. But really the only thing I'm interested in is layers and channels. Sometimes text, but that's pretty much all I use. So to conserve space, I will go ahead and delete everything except layers and channels. And I like to see the channels at the same time as I see layers because I like copy and pasting textures into the channels to have really nice organic masks and so on. So I will drag this up so you can see them both in the same bar. And I will go ahead and get rid of all of these because I just don't use them enough to have it taking up my space. So we have layers, channels, and up here, over here, you'll see the tools. And you have brushes and stamps move to selections and up here will be those tools properties whenever you select them you notice how these properties change i will be using a wacom n203 throughout the dvd and just to show you what that is so here you see the n203 and the good thing about it is it has a really high sensitivity the harder you press down the more uh, you can have the fade in or you can have the size grow or stuff like that it's, just a little bit adds so much. And uh, they have a bamboo or a graphire, and these things have much lower sensitivity, but you know, whatever you can afford. I would love to get a Cintiq eventually, but it's very expensive. I know it's probably worth it, but it's hard to come up with $2,000. And this is really good for texturing and also sculpting in Mudbox or ZBrush or whatever. I use the N203, and if I click on it, you'll see it's they got different sizes, and I'm basically using the six by 11 because I use widescreen monitors it's a little bit better and the price of the 6 by 11 is it says 369 retail but if you use pricegrabber.com or something you could probably find it new for 250 269 something around there I think that's what I paid so just to show you real quick I'll make a new document and I'll leave the default settings and I will go ahead and maximize it and zoom in a little bit by hitting control plus and minus I let you zoom the canvas in and just by default you paint and the harder you press, the bigger it gets. This is a size pressure sensitivity setting. And to see those settings, you can go to Windows Brushes, and it'll bring up this brush dialog. And basically we have Shape Dynamics on, which is controlled by the pin pressure. You could also do Other Dynamics. Basically I use Other Dynamics and Shape Dynamics the most for pressure sensitivity. And you can have it change the opacity based off the pin pressure. And so it doesn't actually change the size, but the lighter you press, the lighter the black. Since this brush is hard edged, you see that it keeps these really hard edge overlays on top of each other. So another brush that I use a lot is a soft brush, which is kind of the same thing, but it has this nice feathered edge around it. And usually I'll use the opacity on other dynamics with this soft, so you can really get some nice soft blends between things. I did make a lot of custom brushes, and I've also collected a lot of custom brushes over the years from various friends and colleagues that I work with. And I don't have all the credits for who made all these brushes, but they were something that become very useful over time. And when you get used to them, it's hard to go back to just a solid brush like this, especially when you're doing destructive things or concrete. It's really nice to have a good organic shape to your brush. So I have included those brushes with this DVD. And to load it, the best thing to do is to drop it in your brushes folder. And to find this brushes folder, I'm using Windows Vista, and you will see it's C Drive, Users, My Username, App Data, Roaming, so on. If you're using Windows XP, you may be under C, Documents and Settings, Local Settings, Application Data, Roaming, and so on. If you can't find it, it's not a big deal. You can always just load them manually. And to do that, you would right click to show your brush properties and then you could choose this arrow and if it's in the brushes folder it would automatically show down here but if it's not in the brushes folder then you can just say load brushes and then you can go and find if it's on your desktop or the DVD. For now I'll go ahead and pick the brushes down there and you'll notice it has do you want to completely overwrite all my brushes or append them so they'll add them to the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and completely overwrite because I did keep a few of those basic brushes that I like. Also to help Sometimes I like changing it to stroke thumbnail 
That way it kind of gives you a little bit better representation of what that brush is going to do. And it'll show you the sensitivity setting. So this will be opacity in and out. Uh, this one will be, it's not opacity, but it would be size. And some of them may have both or neither. So the good thing about this stroke display is it shows you more information. And you can see here, these are basic brushes and then some that add some noise. And you get down to, you get some really crazy noise, hard edge noise. And really, whenever I need a noise brush, I'll just come in here and randomly pick one. And I'll end up choosing a different one every time to get different interesting effects. So some of these brushes, as you go over here, are real light and large. Uh, and these could be good just to add a little bit of variation in your masks or even if you wanted to paint colors. So just to show you real quick, we have just a normal brush that's on size. And to bring that up, I'm just right clicking. This was one of the basic brushes as well, but you'll notice how it kind of sprays it on there and it's also pressure sensitivity. To get that, basically all I did was I'll go to my brushes palette again and also scattering on. So you can have it scatter automatically. You can turn that to pressure sensitivity where it scatters more the harder you press. But this is really good to paint in a mask where you're blending two textures. And you'll notice that it's no longer a hard edge and it can give that organic structure to blend those two textures together a lot better. A few other brushes real quick would be, this one's really neat. It can almost give a painterly background style, but we're not really concept artists. Here's another one. It's really large, but this is really nice for breaking up seams. Uh, a few more. And really, you can go through, experiment with these, and find out what is working for you and what's not. And you can delete. Uh, you can delete brush and kind of make your own set out of these. So that's pretty much the brushes that come with the DVD.